Now this is interesting. The canine that he worked with is named Rid. And in June of 2018, which was what, about four months before he retired, Anthony started this GoFundMe for the dog. The goal is a thousand, uh, $10,000, and to this date, they've raised 5800 of that. It says, it looks like two different dogs. Maybe he's older and younger. But no, let's see. A recently retired member of our department needs our help and support. For everyone who doesn't know Rig, for the past six and a half years, he has been a very hardworking and invaluable police canine. At only seven and a half years old, Rig has unfortunately been diagnosed with degenerative melan poly, which is devastating disease causing progressive paralysis. Um, it affects the spinal cord in older dogs, usually between 8 and 14 years old. They get loss of coordination in the hind legs. They'll wobble and they will drag their feet. Um, it takes anywhere from six months to a year before the dog becomes paraplegic. Then they are unable to control their urine and bowels. Um, so anyway, let's see, um, AT is the organizer and Anthony is the beneficiary. They got 56 donations and the comments, we have $100 saying thank you and enjoy your retirement. Frank Russell, $100. Joseph LaBlanco, so I'm assuming a family member, $100. Another 25 Then Anthony just wrote the name George down. Now, this Conchiella is another officer, $200. He said Joe Rivera is an officer, $100. Another hundred dollars, fifty dollars. Louis LeBlanco, which is his father, donated five hundred. Nancy, a hundred dollars. Christy, a hundred dollars. Wow. Um, somebody. $300, 50, 100, 25, 100, 125, 200, 120, 10, 10, another LeBlanco at 100, 250, 50, 100, 100, 25, another officer's family, 200, 100, 100, 100, wow. wonder if that this is an officer too uh, what is not Sean Rose but the other one Terrence Rose I put you that's ten on that Kevin Kittenbell's an officer that's 201 Well, we know they get paid good enough, that's for sure. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. All right, I found Anthony on LinkedIn. And guess what? He now is with Lobo Handyman Services out in Park Ridge. It says he's well versed in modern law enforcement principles, procedures, techniques, and equipment. 
exceptional knowledge of applicable federal, state, county, and village laws and ordinances and departmental rules and regulations. Excellent relationship skills, well versed in assessing and defusing potential adverse situations. Proficient in the use of firearms, administering CPR, first aid, and emergency equipment and tools. Highly skilled in firefighting principles and practices. Emergency working, emergency situation, oh, I'm sorry, experience working emergency situations in high rise structures. High qualified in conducting investigations individually and with canines for weapons, narcotics, and search and rescue. Proven ability to maintain effective working relationships with employees, other agencies, and the public. So, the comment that I read about his dog was a cadaver dog is false information. Okay, it says he liked those things. Now, his experience. Police officer at the village of Rosemont. From October 2006 to October 2018. So he's now retired from being a police officer. He did it for 12 years and one month, 145 months. His education is Westwood College O'Hare Airport. Associate's degree in criminal justice and police science. He has a BA in business management, marketing related supported services. He graduated high school in 1997. Northeastern Illinois Carpenter Union. His license and certificates. He was issued in 2007, Illinois Law Enforcement Training and Standards Board. Technical Rescue Awareness from Arlington Heights Training Academy in 2006. EMTB, Emergency Medical Technician, Basic, Illinois Department of Public Health, issued in January of 2018 and it expires in 2022. Now, that means he got that the year he was retiring. It's interesting. He's still certified firefighter for Illinois until October of 2021, a home inspector until, it, well, I'm sorry, it says it issued July 2019 and expires July 2019. Honors and awards, department commendation from the Rosemont Public Safety in June of 2018, department commendation, same place, April 2018, life-saving award, April 2018, found unresponded subject lying on the ground while on duty, performed CPR until the paramedics arrived on the scene. Subject survived. Award of Merit, Cook County Sheriff, November 2015, issued for my outstanding service and professionalism. Certificate of Appreciation, Alliance Against Intoxicated Motorists, May of 2012. Honorable Mention, April of 2009, searched and located an offender that was involved in a high-speed pursuit. And so he's no longer on the force. All right, somebody had asked me about this officer, this cop. The one, I don't particularly care for him. I don't really know a whole lot about him. I refer to him as Smiley. His name's Anthony LeBlanco. Uh, Bianco. Lo. Anyway. So I saw what I could find about him. And here it says, Father and son have rescued local residents for decades. This story is kind of current. I was trying to find a date on it, but I know it's at the top of the list, so... It's got to be pretty current. This is 14 years ago. Park Ridge resident Louis LeBlanc Black Blanc was playing basketball at a local recreation center when he heard someone calling his name for help. After the now retired Evingston Fire Chief and paramedic found a man lying on the ground in cardiac arrest, 
he and a nearby nurse performed CPR until the paramedics arrived. Every February the 12th, I got flowers from that guy, he said, who recently passed away. Every year he'd come to the door, I'm still here. Being a civilian hero might seem like a once-in-a-lifetime event, but this wasn't his, the first time the uncle came to the rescue. In 1992, he was jogging along Lucy Highway when he heard tires screeching and saw a car spinning. As the vehicle passed by, he noticed the driver inside slumped over the steering wheel. As the car spun back around, it scraped against another vehicle, slowing its speed. He took the opportunity to jump into the moving car and shut it off. The driver had fallen into a diabetic coma. The 100 Club of Cook County, an organization that supports families of fallen officers, awarded a Valor Award to LeBlanco for his assistance. Identifying those in need and stepping in has become a trend for LeBlanco and his family. Tony, which is Anthony, LeBlanco's Louis son, works for Rosemont Public Safety Canine Officer. In August of 2017, he was off duty and out walking his dog around at 10.30 at night. Something catches me. Something catches me out of the corner of my eye. He said it was my neighbor. He was down in his driveway. After discovering the neighbor had no pulse, Tony started CPR until the paramedics arrived. Both Louis and Tony credit their professional training with making them more attuned to potential emergency situations. They know when someone is in distress, looks like, and what steps to take when someone needs help. I pick up on these things. I see things that aren't right. I did this for almost 30 years. You're just more aware. This ability helped when LeBlanco discovered a kneeling neighbor was in cardiac arrest or when he noted the dark circles around a man's eye that indicated a skull fracture for which he had emergency surgery. Tony said part of the job for first responders is thinking through potential emergencies and the correct steps to take in those situations. When confronted with the situation, like finding a neighbor in cardiac arrest, chances are the responder has already spent some time considering their response and the training kicks in. When it happens, you just jump in. Tony's first-hand experience jumping in occurred when he was about 12 years old. He punched a choke. He punched a choking classmate in the stomach, successfully dislodging the object, cutting off his breathing. His technique wasn't right, but it was very effective. Blanco also has a similar story of childhood heroism. He said when growing up, he and some friends successfully chased and apprehended a burglar with the aid of their toy guns. Mm. Nowadays, the two continue focusing on helping as they can, coming to the assistance of those in need until first responders arrive. We're trying to give our first responders something to work with, LeBlanco said. You try to give them a second chance. So that's, that's a little bit about him. Okay. All right. I just want to point out these comments here. Since Player Games mentioned them during his live. This person says, the K-9 officer, his dad, ex-fire chief, Rosemont chief of police, and his sons are all friends and connected to the hotel. Now, my dad's an ex-fireman. He lives in a city of about, I don't know, quarter to a half a million in population. I couldn't tell you how many fire stations there are in that city. But I can tell you that those firemen that he worked with were all in their 70s and 80s. Many of them are dead. 
but they always still kept in touch with each other, even after retirement. I'm not taking up for anything, anybody really particularly in Rosemont. I'm just saying for the, the workers that work in different fields, especially when their lives are on the line, they do tend to have some sort of a bond. Now, Rosemont only having 4,000 in population, it's not out of the ordinary that they would all be friends. Now, as far as them being connected to the hotel, I'm not sure how there's any proof of that. She says, the canine officer was in the freezer, hot and sweaty. Hmm. Was that him? The canine and the other dude in black are the ones that recreated crime scenes. Oh, here it is. Yes, I mean, she said something about a cadaver dogs. Y'all just make up anything as y'all go along and he feeds off of it and y'all feed off of him. Now they're sleeping with transsexuals. Let me say this. We all want to find some dirt and some guilt to place the blame on the cops, the hotels, the whoever, somebody. But just saying anything that rolls off your tongue and trying to act like it's facts is what has really screwed up this case and ruined if there would have ever been any chances to get it reopened. Now, if God creates a miracle, why are y'all trying to fight against it by adding more lies to try to keep it ruined, keep it not ever be able to be opened up? Y'all need to think about those things, please.